Al, thank you very much for taking this time and joining me. Now, the ACAC AGM uh, was last week there. I guess just, Al, starting things off here, what were a couple of the main points discussed by uh, the different athletic directors or presidents at this meeting? Uh, we, we talked a lot about next year and what we think it's going to look like. Uh, kind of reviewed uh, a lot of the information that was sent out uh, a couple years ago, or a couple years ago, a couple uh weeks ago in regards to the meeting that our executive had with the uh, presidents and just sort of going over the timelines that we need to hit in regards to, you know, when we're going to be able to know whether or not we're going to be able to travel to national championships, uh, whether we're going to be able to have a fall start for our league sports or, or a basic January start. And just going over some of the um, information that was shared with our executive team at the uh, in that meeting with the presidents and just you know making sure that we're working hand in hand with our institutions and our presidents and our leadership teams at our post secondaries to uh, create a positive experience for student athletes next year, but do it in a very safe manner. Now, Al, last uh, week or maybe the week before, the last time that we chatted, uh, you know, scheduling, they had some rough dates on when, you know, uh, different sports could possibly start. But what's the newest now with how scheduling is going for these different sports? Yeah, so last week, we approved the, uh, the schedule for uh, soccer as well as our tournament sports. Um, you know, what we've agreed to is that uh, we wouldn't have any sports start until the middle of September. Uh, just making sure that, you know, once again, safety in mind that uh, we are adhering to those um, expectations from our, our presidents. So, you know, our soccer season will start the middle of uh, September and, and go through to the middle of October and followed by the playoffs, basically. Um, and then uh, with our tournament sports for our winter tournament sports, uh, like curling normally starts in, we have one event in the, uh, in the fall semester, but that's gonna be delayed to the winter semester. So all of our curling is going competitively wise, as far as league goes, it's gonna happen in the winter semester. Uh, we're still gonna be looking at having a cross country running season, but it's all gonna be reduced. Uh, we're not gonna have as many events for our teams to travel to, but there'll be less. And then with our basketball and volleyball teams, uh right now we're our schedule's been delayed uh we're going to be able to see a draft hopefully this week and then we'll be meeting at the end of june to approve that schedule um and hopefully by then we'll have a little more information from our presidents on what they're looking for as far as the start time goes and Al, you know, we were talking just out off camera here. Uh, while schedules might be reduced a little bit here, uh, you were saying, you know, there you guys are hoping to get a little more exhibition games in and, and still make those games up and still see athletics, uh, you know, how we hopefully normally would at, at Lakeland College, correct? Yeah, you bet. Like, uh, we're, we're definitely going to be seeing a reduction in league games this upcoming year. Um, you know, we're talking about seeing more teams being able to participate in the playoffs, so more teams will make the playoffs. Um, but, you know, to complement that, because we want to give as best or as a positive student athlete experience as possible, the, you know, the league is allowing institutions to work with their leadership teams to say, you know what, if you're able to play some exhibition competitions or some other non-league games uh feel free to do that just make sure that you know you're, you're doing it in the safest way as possible so that's going to be left up to the institutions to make those decisions on their own kind of thing now al off the top you you mentioned uh championships here and the acac previously was sort of unsure whether or not you know hosting or participating in ccaa championships uh would be a possibility this upcoming year now what's the newest along uh those lines there uh, well, we're going to receive some direction from um, our presidents in the ACAC for fall championships by the end of June. So that's the timeline that's been set there. So we're hoping to hear back um, at that point in time if fall, fall national championships are going to be allowed for our, our conference to travel to or host. Um, and then when it comes to the winter national championships that usually occur in uh, March, uh, we'll know that timeline uh, later in the fall um, if we're going to be able to travel to those championships. So sometime in November, I believe, is a timeline set for that. So, you know, we're, we're not really sure what that what what's going to come out of that. But we're, we're hopeful that, uh, you know, some of our teams will at least be able to travel to cha national championships. But once again, it's going to depend on a lot of variables, including 
you know, what our governments are setting as far as parameters go in regards to travel and competition. So just, it's just, just more challenging when you're traveling outside of your uh, province and you have to jump on a plane and head somewhere else. So, you know, a lot of variables for that leadership group to, you know, wade through and hopefully um, we'll, we'll find out those answers fairly soon. Well, Al, I think it's safe to say for wrestlers fans out here, we are also hopeful to be, be seeing them not only playing, but having that success that we saw, you know, before uh, all of COVID-19. Al, thank you very much for taking this time and joining me. No, thanks a lot, Evan. Appreciate the time and uh, always good chatting with you.